Hello, and welcome at this Virtual Mara Bumblebee Special. I hope you'll enjoy this session. We all know bumblebees, they're the big cousin of our well-known honeybee. But did you know that in the UK alone we got more than 20 species of bumblebee? Some are doing okay, some are expanding, we'll see that later. Some are doing quite bad and some are at the brink of extinction. Overall, pollinators, honeybees and bumblebees are having a bit of a hard time in the Western world. And there are several reasons for that. If we want to help the bumblebees, we first got to know which bumblebees do we have? Well, we know that. Where are they? And how can we best help them? One of the things that's really good for bumblebees is making sure they got enough to eat. So we need to know, what do they eat? Well, you probably know the answer already, and we'll explore it a bit in this video. They visit flowers, and then after nectar, which is a sugary um, um, secretion of flowers, gives them sugars, carbohydrates, that's the energy. They also have the pollen, and pollen is full of protein. It's a very protein-rich source, and they mainly use that to feed to their youngsters, take it back to the nest, and feed it to the brood. Now, we've got several species of bumblebee, and in this little exercise we're going to look at six of the best known species. They overlap in their choice of flowers, but not completely. They do have some preferences per species as well. What we would like you to do is over the period of this Mara time, this fertile Mara four days, to look in your own garden, if you go out for a little walk or your exercise in a park, look at flowers, see if you can find bumblebees, identify what species bumblebee it is, and then write down what type of flower they're on. If we do that over wherever we live, then we get an idea of which bumblebees are where, but more important also, which flowers each bumblebee prefers. And if we know that, then we can really help the bumblebees in making sure that those flowers are present. So, in the little video that follows, we're going to have a look at a bit of basic information on bumblebees. We're going to look at the different species that there are. We're going to look at these six species. And then it's over to you, see if you can find them, record them, and basically see if you can be a bumblebee scientist. Good luck. Bumblebees visit flowers for two reasons. First, they like to drink the nectar, which is very sugary and gives them a good source of energy. In order to get to the nectar, the bee has to insert her long tongue into the flower. Now, some species of bumblebee have got a tongue that is very long, like the garden bumblebee. That means she can use flowers that have the nectar deeply hidden. Other bumblebees have got tongues that are much shorter, and that means they are excluded from flowers that hit their nectar quite deeply. The second reason why a bumblebee visit flowers is pollen. Pollen is nutritious, it's a good source of protein. So the bees collect the pollen from the flower and they collect it on a special part of their hind leg. They store it there, they add more and more to it and then bring it back to the nest to feed the young with. So quite often you see bumblebees flying around with a so-called pollen basket on their hind leg. The color of that pollen basket indicates which type of flowers they have been visiting. It can be white, brownish, bright yellow, red, even almost black. Let's have a look at the bumblebee body. Like all insects, a bumblebee body consists of three parts. The head, the thorax or middle part, and the abdomen or last part. Starting with the head, that contains the eyes, the mouth with the tongue we already saw, and the antennae, which are quite important for the bumblebee because that's what it smells with. Then the middle part is called the thorax, and it's here that the wings are attached, four wings, and the legs, six legs. Then finally, we've got the abdomen, the last part, and in there 
we find the heart, the intestines and all the other internal organs. Now, every bumblebee is black. Its skin, its exoskeleton, is completely black. However, on top of that it has a dense fur of hair. And these hairs can have multiple colors. White, yellow, black, ginger, red. And it's the pattern of the colors of the hair that allow us to identify the different bumblebees. So let's look at the bumblebees in this project. We got to look at six species. And the first thing we do is distinguish them by the color at the tip of their tail, their bum if you wish. That can be white, upper panel, red, lower left panel, or ginger brownish, lower right panel. To start with the white tailed, if your bumblebee has got one yellow band on the thorax and one yellow band in the middle of the abdomen, it's a white tailed bumblebee. Bit of a look alike is the garden bumblebee. It's got that same yellow band on the front of the thorax, but then a second yellow band at the hind part of the thorax and a yellow band at the first part of the abdomen. You can confuse these two in the field if you just see it in a glimpse. You really need to get your eye in. The third bumblebee with a white bum is quite different. Three bumblebee, brown thorax, black abdomen, white tail. Let's then look at the red tailed bumblebees. If it's completely black with a red bum, it's a red tail. If it's got one or two yellow bands, then it's a female of the early bumblebee. And these workers are smaller than the other bumblebee species as well. Then finally, the ginger or the brown tail. If we see a bumblebee that's got the same color all over, and it's variable, it can be gingerish, yellowish, brownish, then it's the common carnaby. And we got a good chance of seeing all these six species in our gardens and in the parks around us. Let's examine these six species in a bit more detail. And we start with the white-tailed bumblebee. Now, actually, these are two species in one, the white tail and the buff tail. If we look at the worker bees, the female worker bees, it's very difficult to distinguish them in the fields. And that's why we just merge them all into one species. The queens, if you see a big fat queen flying around, they're different. A real white-tailed queen has got a white bum, but a buff-tailed bumblebee queen, there the tip of the tail is a bit buffish, broken white. Now, these are large bumblebees, they're abundant in gardens, and from what we've seen thus far, they're not fuzzy eaters. They seem to visit many flowers. You can find them on a variety of flowers. Then the next one, the garden bumblebee. Um, this is the one we saw already that's got a long tongue and therefore it has access to different types of flowers. If you got a good glimpse of the face, you'll see that the face is longer as well. And in this slide, you'll see the face of a white-tailed bumblebee with a relatively short tongue and then compare it with the face of a garden bumblebee, a bit horse-like face, much longer. And if the little video works, you can see this enormous tongue dangling down from the hat of the garden bumblebee. You can see that particularly well if she's hovering in front of a flower. Right, then the last one with a white bum, that's the tree bumblebee. And this is one you're very likely to see in your garden. It's a strange one, because it doesn't really belong in the British Isles. It came from France, and in 2001 we found the first tree bumblebees in Dorset. And since then it has been flying steadily north. In 2013, seven years ago, I saw it for the first time in Newcastle. Now, they're quite distinguished. Brown thorax, black abdomen, white tail. Old bumblebees... Old carnabees and old tree bumblebees can look a little bit alike if they lose their hairs and get both. However, the moment you see that white tail, you know it's a tree bumblebee. Tree bumblebee, good name. 
it loves to nest in trees and quite often it nests in bird boxes as well or in your house under the gutter. Then we got the common carnaby, quite a common species, variable but it basically got the same colour all over. Beware, bees just like us, if they get old they lose their hair and then that black um, skin comes shining through but this one will never have a white tail. We find that this has a preference for sunflowers. Among others, the birds with trefoil, as you can see on the picture to the right here. And then finally, we got the bumblebees with a red tail. This is a lovely one, the red tailed bumblebee. Completely black and a red tail, and you'll see quite a lot of them. The males are different, they got yellow as well. However, in the time of the Mara, there's probably no males around yet, so we can safely focus completely on the female worker bees. Now this one really likes the flowers of the knapweed. However, when we have Amara, the knapweed is not flowering yet, but the red-tailed bumblebees are flying. So where will they go now? Really interesting to find that out. And then finally, our smallest bumblebee, the early bumblebee. It's got a red tail, then the female has got this white, sorry, this yellow band in the front of the thorax and a second yellow band in front of the abdomen. Now that abdominal yellow band can be quite faint. If you look at the photograph on the right you can clearly see the yellow band in the front of the thorax and you can just make out a couple of yellowish hairs on the abdomen. Much more difficult to see. That depends on the individual bee. That's about what I had to say about the bumblebees. So now it's time for you to get active. Go out in your garden, in your local park or when you're on your daily exercise, woodland, fields, wherever you go and see if you can spot bumblebees. Monitor them, record them, identify what species they are and see if you can find out which flower the fart you on. Now, practical terms, what you need to do. On the Mara website you'll find a bumblebee information pack. You download that, all the information you need is in there. Among others you'll find this monitoring form and I'm going to ask you to fill in that form and use that form to write down all the bumblebees that you see. And you can do that Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday morning of the Mara. Then of course we'd like to know what actually did you see? So please send your form back in. There's an email address in the information pack. We'll gather all the information together and then we'll feed back to you what actually we've all seen together. Right? I wish you a very good Mara and I hope you see many, many bumblebees these days. Stay safe, take care and good luck. Bye.